Today is about two things. One, it's about a fish. It's about cooking the fish greatly so that everyone will love it. Even the people say, oh, I don't like fish. It makes me fishy. I don't like the smell. <laughs> I'll give you tips and in 10 minutes tops, you're going to make one of the best fish you've ever eaten in your life. Second, it's going to be about a flower. And this flower is called the cauliflower. She is one of the best things that the soil gives us. Sometimes she smells weird. And if you don't understand from her language and not cook it so well, the house might smell not so nice or you might not like the taste. But if you understand from her language, she gives you heavens on earth. So two things all together. I'm going to make a cauliflower pilav and also I'm going to make this green fish with incredible taste. Now, I have half a cauliflower here. Yesterday I got carried on. I was gonna cook this for a friend of mine and Burak and Bahar. Amazing. From 10 out of 10? 11. <laughs> I made the rest like into small pieces like this. And I'm going to put this to the food processor. It will cover all the food processor, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to divide it into two halves. Otherwise, when it's working, the bottom becomes like a puree and on the top there will be like big chunks and I don't want that. And I'm going to also throw in one garlic each time. So two garlics for the whole thing. So it's going to be chunks like this. Now I'm turning the heat on about three tablespoons of olive oil. If there are big chunks like this, take them in again. And also this time I'm going to add two handfuls of walnuts as well. This is not a necessity. Do you cook the two parts separately as well? No, 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 I will run. <laughs> now my cauliflower started to cook. There are big chunks. If you have like chunks like this, you can always chop them later on. This will cook on full whack. It's very important for these kind of, in a way, let's say smelly vegetables to be cooked on the highest heat. This way, the outside caramelizes. It keeps the water inside and it's just something we want because we want to have the crunch, but we want to have the caramelization and the sweetness from that caramelization. The carbohydrates really working there. It increases the taste dramatically and it's in the highest heat because I don't want the juiciness of the vegetable to go away. So everything has to happen fast. For this first, I'm going to add almost one teaspoon of salt. And it's more than half a teaspoon of black pepper. One and a half teaspoon of curry. This is very important. Just heat it a bit like this. And then half a glass of water. What this does, this opens up the curry and also cleans the bottom of the pan which where the taste is. The kitchen starts to smell amazingly because there's garlic, the curry. But what's important, now as you can see it's a bit soggy. This sogginess should go away again and then we are ready. And as you can see the bottom is cleaned. Our cauliflower pilaf is ready and now I'm going to show you how to make one of the greatest fish in the world. Now, I'm going to make a topping for the fish. So the flavors will go to the fish and I'm going to also cook it in the grill. I want a bit of crunchiness, some hotness, some sourness all together. So for this, what I'm going to need is some garlic. If you love garlic, I'm going to be very generous. Eight cloves of garlic, but these are small. If you're big, like three big garlics. And these are hot chilies from my garden. And I'm going to have some almonds. If you cannot find almonds where you live, you can use walnuts, cashews. Peanuts will be very nice. Are they roasted? These are raw, but both would do. And I'm going to use a bit of parsley. And also there, coriander could be used. But this combination is going to be great. Now, the hardest thing about this recipe is making the chopping. So for the almonds, I want some very thin chunks and some thicker ones. What this does is it adds a dimension to the fish recipe. So this becomes a joyful dish with a lot of flavors, actually. Why I'm showing how to cut it. For example, you can cut the almonds like this, but when they're in the oven, they're going to be brown, but because these are thick, they're not going to be crunchy. But when you 
cut it like thin like this, some of the parts will turn really brown and it will be crunchy like chips. And there will be bigger chunks for the flavor to get that milkiness. So it acts like two different ingredients. What I like from cooking is like, the name is not like preparing food, but it's cooking. So when you combine it with fire, everything changes depending on how you combine it together. Now the almonds are done. I'm going to do the same for the garlic, parsley and the red peppers. You might not be great with your knife and you might have hard time finally chopping some things. Here's for example garlic and because I'm dyslexic I've never been great with this precise knife skills making everything equal. But what I do is, for example, I put tip of the knife somewhere and like I'm going to have a space of making like a half circle. What I do, I collect everything together, put the top here and then press with my finger and then start to chop by not moving the top, but making it like a half circle. Make sure if you're putting your hand to the knife, just never bottom up, but always top down and then collect everything together. Start again. Collect, start again. This way, you'll always have nice small pieces of finely chopped things. I want my peppers to be chunky because I want them to hit and then run. I also want plenty of parsley, like half a batch. In Turkey, we have big batches, so. I think you designed this knife to finally chop better, no? <laughs> yes. Actually, that's what happened, you know. A friend of mine, she's living in San Diego. She's called Denise. She brought me a stone. The stone was saying, be the change you need to see in the world, Gandhi. For me, I needed a better knife, which would help me finally chop better, because Turkish food is all about finely chopping stuff. So I made it myself. Can we find the knife on Etsy as well? Yes, of course. Well, I think we're soon going to be in Amazon as well, but we're in Etsy right now. I put the parsley, the almonds, the red pepper and the garlic all together. This goodness is already great. Actually, the story of this recipe goes way back, year 1995. I was 15. I went to Portugal and there was a fish sauce which was similar to this and I loved it. And I just said, one day I have to make it. So 25 year old inspiration there. To this, I'm going to add three tablespoons of white wine vinegar and then eight, nine tablespoons of olive oil. This you can even increase. Bit of salt and bit of pepper as well. Why white wine vinegar actually? If it doesn't intervene with your belief system, if you make it first into a wine and then to vinegar, the taste becomes incredibly better. This is a very nice mixture. You can use this for meat, you can use this for cheese. And now I have a tray here. I'm going to put some more olive oil to the tray. No cooking paper, it's not going to stick at all. It will work as miracles. And I have here the sea bass. These are nurtured near Bodrum. They're not wild, but we're a bit crowded, so I'm making from three sea bass. They have to be skin on, but today Burak was having a phone call while the guy was probably filleting the fish. It's much, much, much better when the skin is on. I'm scoring the fish like this so that the taste gets in. If you don't have access to sea bass, any kind of meaty fish, they can be thicker layered as well, will work. We have to be very generous in this, so like this, we cover all of it. It looks like a Christmas tree. Yes, if guests are coming, it's a very guest friendly dish because it looks as if you've done so much. <laughs> And by the way, if you like not so good with chopping and etc., you can put them into the food processor and it will still be good. Not as good as done with the knife, but it will be good. Now, my fish is ready. If you're going to cook this for like two hours later, please do not put the mixture on top because the salt is going to work and it will be more watery and your fish would fry very fast in the oven. It will start to boil in their own water and we don't like that. So I'm going to put it to the oven for 200 degrees Celsius with the grill on and the fan on and nothing else. This is very important. I'm going to put it on the highest rack and it will cook in eight minutes. If you cook the fish too much, it will be dry and it will stick to each other and it's not going to be so sweet. If it's raw, again, we don't like it. But the right moment is when you put a fork and take it, it has to fall apart and that's what we like.
Now we have the pilaf. We have the fish. If you want to make like a posh plate like this, put the cauliflower at the bottom. And then let's get our fish. Oof. I'm going to show you this. This is how the fish should be. Wow. Inside very juicy and it should fall apart like this. Mmm. Almonds. The parsley is garlic. The thing that comes the last is the curry one. What makes it jump? Crisscross. Crisscross will make you jump, jump. Uh huh, uh huh. Jump, jump. Mmm. Mmm. What makes it so good is the juiciness of the fish, first of all. Mmm. Bahar, would you like to join? <laughs> Guys, it's really, really good. Hope you try it. If your fish is a little thicker, maybe one or two more minutes, but not much. Not, not much more. How are you? On the clouds. This cauliflower pilau, by itself, it's amazing. And it makes you very happy. But the fish it turns it into something else. I know. As a person who doesn't like fish, you are. How is it different? It's very juicy. And you get the parsley, you get the oil, you get the almonds, and it's not fishy. The fishiness that you don't like is usually, most of the time, overcooking. Mm. And the skin, when it's overcooked, turns into something bitter. And mm. probably what you don't like is that. So that doesn't exist there. Yeah. Thank you for watching this video. If you loved it, please press like. That's how the word spreads. And please share it with your loved ones through WhatsApp, Telegram, Signal or something. <laughs> that would be lovely. Take great care. Have a great weekend. Love you all so very much. Bye bye.